The controversial Keystone XL pipeline cleared another hurdle this week after Nebraska's Supreme Court tossed a lawsuit challenging a proposed route for the pipeline. Just hours later, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives voted to approve the pipeline despite the threat of a presidential veto. Bipartisan supporters of the pipeline say it will create jobs in the U.S. and make the nation more energy independent. Now the State Department will decide if the project to carry oil from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico is in the nation's interest. That's our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag fox 26 for life Joining us live in the newsroom is our Roundup panel. It's led by our Fox 26 senior legal analyst Chris Tritico. All right, Chris, so what are we going to see this week come out of the Keystone? Well, the Senate's going to pass it, and then that will go to the president's desk, and the president has already said he's going to veto it. Now, I personally think that's a mistake. The president's going to have to veto a whole lot of legislation this year. I don't know why he would start the fight this quickly over something that uh, most of the country believes is in the in, is in the country's best interest. And so I, I think he ought to sign it and move move on and get ready to veto a lot of things that he has going to truly have to veto. But we'll see what happens. Another th interesting point to me is why the State Department is just now going to do a study on whether or not it's in the nation's best interest. This has been going on for six years. I don't know, I don't know what's taken them so long other than foot dragging. Um, introduce our panel, Mustafa Tamiz, our political analyst, Jackie Bally, public policy analyst. I, Mustafa, we'll start with you. I, I think the president ought to just sign this piece of legislation and, and, and delay the big fights for things that are, that are going to be far more important to him. Well, whether he signs it or doesn't sign it, the pipeline doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When we started talking about the pipeline, uh, oil was twice of what it was today. Right. Gas price under $2 a barrel, and the tar sands are the most expensive way to extract oil out of the ground. So building this pipeline at this point doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the, the political fight whether the president signs it or doesn't sign it, or the House should pass a bill that they know the president's going to veto, that's just Washington. The Congressional Budget Office said that the pipeline would only create 35 permanent jobs. The Republicans have said it's going to create over 15,000. Uh, I think it's probably somewhere in between that, in between those two numbers. Yeah. It's, Sh should, the, you know. It's not even just the Republicans. A lot of economists are saying that as well. And I thought he was supportive of the Keystone Pipeline. I am. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, they're saying that it could, it could pump in $34 billion into the economy. There could, could create a lot of jobs. 860,000 uh, barrels of oil per day. We could become in, in, uh, independent. Um, energy-wise in a way that we're not. I, I agree with you. This is a win-win. 28 of his Democrats, of his colleagues on his uh, party, crossed over and agreed with the Republicans and signed this bill. 68% uh, of our voters, regardless of an R or a D by your name, agreed that we should do this. And uh, there are going to be a lot of big fights. This is a win-win for our economy. This is something that should be signed. Uh, but with the price of oil the way it is, is it still a win? Yeah, but it's not always going to stay this way. I mean, the, the price, we've seen this happen before. The price of oil is very fluid. It fluctuates. We need to be in, pre in preparation for when it's not like this. All right. Let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Let's take a look at a couple of the tweets that are coming in right now about the Keystone Pipeline. This person says, will construction really create 42,000 jobs? No. What is the cost of the environmental risk? Depending on what study you read, the, how many jobs it can create, it's definitely um, in conflict there. Uh, Michael says, Congress needs to pass the bill, make him answer to the 62% of the people who are for it. And again, depending on what poll you read, um, not really sure what the support is. Well, I, I think the public is generally in favor. I think most of the polls have said the public is generally in favor. And the, 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 the real question, I think, and probably what the president is not talking about and should be, is the fact that this pipeline, if the deal goes through the way it is, is the American public is on the tab for a cleanup if there's a breach. And, and that's an issue, Mustafa, that I think we need to pay attention to. Look, uh, the reason why I'm for the pipeline, because I think Pipeline is one of the safest way to bring oil from Canada into our region to refine it, much better than, than trucking it or bringing it through rail. But the issue of the creating of the jobs, I mean, the Congressional Budget Office, which is a nonpartisan group, did this estimation of 25 jobs. And the reason for that is that although it creates some jobs, but also you also lose some jobs. So the, the truckers that are bringing that oil will no longer have the opportunity to do that. The people that work on the freight lines that are bringing that oil will no longer. So if you look at the net effect, it only creates net 25 jobs. What about the cleanup part? I mean, it, it, should the American taxpayers be on the hook to clean up a spill if it happens? No, and, and you probably won't 
see that. The same way a lot of people are saying we don't want our taxpayers' dollars building it, and the private companies have come in to do that. So you will see the, the government work with the private uh, companies to try to clean up if, the, if that happens, when that happens. Another thing that you did hit on, though, that I think we're not discussing, this is political. You have a lot of environmentalists who are against this, and they're the ones who gave the president and a lot of Democrats a lot of dollars. They are pushing for him not to sign this, and that's what you're seeing. That's why there's oh, such I'm, an issue. I, so I so it is political. political, and the environmentalists are working against this. But politically, it just doesn't make any sense for him to veto this when he's got all these fights I agree. coming up. I well, agree. Look, look, there is no, uh, I mean, when we, we, we privatize profits, but you, you know, we socialize risk. What risk. And right. in this situation, to think that the American taxpayer is not on the hook if there's a breach, that's a problem. We are. All right, we're going to leave it right there. We'll be back next week wrapping up the hottest stories of the week.